I'm Jay Stelly. I'm a, a software engineer on the project, doing 3D graphics work, physics work, uh, behavior modeling, that kind of stuff in the game. Uh, we're making a really immersive world, and I've been focusing a lot on creating technology that enables it to be more immersive. Uh, for instance, uh, I've created a system for dynamically updating all of the surfaces in the game. So uh, the, the surface of a door or a wall or floors, can you can add graphics to them as you play. So we can put bullet holes on them, spray paint on them, uh, have blood spray on them, uh, scorch marks, burn marks, whatever. Any, anything you do can affect the world. If you if you actually you know shoot a door and leave bullet holes in it, and then you open the door, the bullet holes are you know, they're on the door. They don't go away. And as you play through the game, if you come back to where you've been before, you'll see all the stuff that you've that you've done, all the damage that you've left. Half Life has some really neat physical behaviors. Uh, we have slippery floors and icy surfaces that you can slide around on and bounce off the walls and kind of try to find your way through something. Um, one of the sequences, you come up on this uh, wet floor and you slide around on it and fall through this like atrium, you know, through glass and it breaks and just glass shatters and rains down. I am at the moment the designated writer at Valve. Um, I'm responsible for overseeing the script and story elements of the game. The scripted sequences allow us to tell a story without taking you out of the game. And every time you play, you'll find different events happening. <laughs> Things will happen with a different, completely different flow. Every time you go into a new situation in the game, it can unfold in a completely different way. Um, a lot of people look for this kind of spontaneity uh, of gameplay on, on the internet. And they play Quake Deathmatch, they play with other people for the feeling that anything can happen. Um, we're getting that feeling back into a solo play game with Half-Life because the characters and the creatures in the game have sufficient artificial intelligence that every time they encounter each other, there's no way that the player can predict what's going to happen. I can only imagine what sort of things people are going to see when they play this game that none of us here at Valve will ever see because every time someone plays the game, it'll be a completely unique experience for them. Here, I'm responsible for doing the, uh, the sound effects, so everything, basically everything that you hear coming out of the speaker is kind of my fault. <laughs> um, then I also do the music, and then some of the sound programming, which is the digital signal processing algorithms. We've sort of made a lot of effort to uh, make the sounds as realistic as we can. You'll hear the grunts are sort of, they're hiding in this warehouse, and you're completely outnumbered. There's no way you can really win. Um, and you'll hear them talking to each other on the radios. They, um, they'll sort of uh, do things like um, throw grenade grenades at you which will bounce around and, and uh, when they're shooting at you as they inevitably do you'll hear uh, gun sounds that change uh, very subtly. They have sort of shells that are ejecting out of the guns and if you hit them they're sort of talking at you and well sort of insulting you and doing things like that. Just the fact that there's, there's really a lot going on at once in terms of um, some pretty nice cutting edge graphics um, so there's a real realism to the world. Um, when you combine that with, uh, you know, some fairly complex sound effects and uh, some really interesting monster behaviors, uh, I just hope that people really sort of get sucked into the game so that, you know, you feel it's sort of this living, breathing place. Um, and, you know, if you sort of play this game on a giant monitor, you can kind of get scared. I uh, primarily write the animation system, um, work on the tools exporting of the animations, and other various little engine tweaks now and again. 
The main advantage with going with a skeletal animation system is primarily memory savings. If you were to store all the vertices and all of the different frames of animation, you'd end up eating like half a megabyte of memory and only have a few seconds worth of animation. But if you store all the bone information, just how all the bones twist and stretch, it ends up being a couple hundred bytes per frame. That, that way we can get 30, 40 seconds worth of animation per monster in a couple hundred K, which is a major memory savings. One interesting side effect is that the bones and the skin on top of them are completely disconnected. So I can take the same animation, the same motion, as you see with the bones, and put a different skin on top of it. Change the heads, change the textures, change out any body part, put a gun on the hand. When the monster plays our animation, the gun automatically moves as the hand did because we store all of the fundamental animation of the character, which is the bones. A big goal was making it so that the animators would get exactly what they saw in 3D Studio in the game with as little loss as possible. In fact, there isn't any loss. We use all of the normal 3D Studio techniques of smoothing groups and blending and so on and so forth. Those all export, save them to a file, they go into the game and they play back unmodified, which greatly simplifies their task. Steve's AI system is just, at times, unbelievable. Um, I walk into a room with three or four monsters in there who don't have weapons more powerful than me, but they outflank me and I die. And it's just like, that's finally refreshing of, of not going into a game and completely devastating all their monsters who just act like, you know, ducks in a shooting gallery. Going in and having a, a virtual squad with you to help you clean out the monsters, things you, you save, scientists to help you work equipment. Um, finally, it's not just you alone in the game, it's you with lots of other characters um, interacting in a, you know, almost little virtual movie. Thank <laughs> you.